I remember one time I had a chain like this with a medallion on, and I watched Jay-Z when we first all came in the game looking at the chain like, like, what the f is that? Like, you know, like, what, like, you, you know? And now you look at these motherfuckers and they billionaires, this guy got 400 million and 600 million, say, what the f I been doing, man? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so no. yeah, I would change it. Yeah. And the thing is, they had a business plan. They had a structure and they, and even though they looked like they was party, Puff Daddy's the king yeah. of deception. Yeah. Every time we was in the party, oh, he was throwing his, his vodka in every picture. He was, he was, just, so we didn't know. We like, yo, he's a great guy. This is a great party. This is a great, yo, give me your clothes. I'm a rocket in the video. Yo, 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 yo. Sean John sold 400 million. The champagne, this, 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 the, the, this, this. Boy, the joke's on us. Yeah. He been doing this real yeah and we can't be mad at him that individual has long been outspoken about their skill in manipulating others even prior to the onset of legal actions and allegations of sex trafficking now they have unveiled the extent of their manipulative abilities a realization that may only dawn upon you when it's already too late to retreat the hip-hop community is most likely owned by gay to be honest but, with but you, you think they'll be an they're owned the by gay. They're, I happen to think there's a gay mafia in hip hop. And if anything happens to me after I bring up this subject, you know what it is. Rappers getting locked up mm -hmm. and rappers dying. Yeah, I think I've done songs with gay rappers. I'm pretty sure of that. I'm pretty sure of that. <laughs> like, 2011, you gotta hide that you're gay? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, be real. Like, you seem to want to. The average artist walks into a record label who is a pimp and says, please, pimp me, put me out. Throughout the past 20 years, nearly everyone has formed their own opinion about Bad Boy founder Diddy, and veteran rapper Fat Joe is no exception. It's unsurprising that Fat Joe shares the view that the major label system operates like a Ponzi scheme, often mistreating emerging artists. Across the 50-year journey of hip-hop, rappers have frequently voiced their discontent with record labels and the individuals driving the business side of music promotion, rather than focusing on creating music for the audience. Additionally, Joe believes that Bad Boy, under Diddy's leadership, should be held accountable for mishandling young male artists and exposing them to instances of sexual harassment. If your man says he's raps, and he don't have a deal, there's a problem with that. Fat Joe has consistently been forthright in discussing homosexuality within the realm of hip hop. He maintains an open-minded perspective, asserting as far back as 2011 that one's sexual orientation shouldn't be a significant issue. He even suggested the possibility of having collaborated with gay rappers before. In a candid reflection, he expressed, I'm pretty sure the football, underscore, underscore, is gay. The basketball, underscore, underscore, is gay. Underscore, underscore, is gay. There are millions of gay people in the world. Girls, too. When specifically addressing the hip-hop industry, Fat Joe shared his gay mafia theory suggesting that the hip-hop community is likely influenced by individuals who are part of the LGBTQ community, particularly behind the scenes. He clarified that he wasn't referring to rappers themselves, but rather to key figures like editorial presidents of magazines, program directors at radio stations, and those responsible for award ceremonies. The discussion also touched upon industry practices and criticisms within the hip-hop landscape. Fat Joe criticized the major label system, likening it to a Ponzi scheme and highlighting discrepancies in accounting practices. He pointed out instances where artists struggled to recoup their investments and cited examples of unfair treatment within the industry. Moreover, Fat Joe raised concerns about the exploitation of young male artists, though he didn't directly accuse anyone. He alluded to previous accusations against Diddy and others in positions of power within the industry. This discussion underscores ongoing tensions and challenges faced by artists navigating the complex landscape of the music business. Yo, how did this nigga told me he want receipts? Let's start with your mother, nigga. Your mother got the receipts. After dropping his diss track aimed at Diddy, 
and has persisted in criticizing his ex-label boss across social platforms. In March 2020, the Harlem World rapper took to Instagram Live to elaborate on his decision to vocally confront Diddy, particularly delving into the motivations behind his lyrical collab in the latest track, Oracle 2, which metaphorically stands on the shoulders of those affected. When I see the hurt and the pains of other people on Bad Boy, that motivates me to say something so I don't be deemed as a person. Observing the suffering and anguish experienced by others affiliated with Bad Boy serves as my motivation to speak out. May shared with nearly 1,000 viewers during the live feed. I refuse to be labeled as someone who merely amassed wealth and turned a blind eye. Unlike the many individuals surrounding Puff who failed to hold him accountable, I won't be a part of the yes-men culture. They witness him destroying lies yet remain silent. People may criticize my beliefs and question my Christianity, yet they won't confront Puff about his actions. Mesa's recent critique of Puff seemingly emerged out of the blue with his latest track. Though not directly naming Puff, the lyrics unmistakably target the bad boy founder. Since Cain killed Abel, I'm able to kill Cain. Mace spits in the second verse, alluding to Diddy's name change in 2021. Yeah, I'm just a Harlem native representing down a Vegas strip with my own stuff. You're from Mount Vernon. Go represent your own neighborhood, he continues. I'm not envious of your financial worth, but I'm shedding light on the reality of your work. You're not an innovator. You're just exploiting death for profit. Pay homage to his mother. Give her what she deserves. Additionally, Fat Joe disclosed Diddy's alleged tactics to sabotage artists who dare to depart from his record label, making their professional lives exceedingly difficult. There are claims that Diddy influenced Wendy Williams' firing from HLT 97 over insinuations regarding his sexuality as mentioned by Charlemagne the God on comedian Andrew Schultz's flagrant podcast. Charlemagne elaborated on the enduring conflict between Wendy Williams and Diddy, spanning several decades. Oh, that was Wendy. Wendy's whole thing was Diddy was gay since the 90s. She knew, dog. No, Wendy was we throwing that out there. apology. That's why Wendy got fired from Hot 97. Wendy got fired from Hot 97 by Diddy because that's when Bad Boy was smoking hot. Wow. And um, yeah, she got fired for putting that out there. Like, Do you think that Diddy held on to the gay rumors so that people didn't know what he really was? Yeah. Ooh. Because that's the perfect smoke screen. You'd rather people think you're gay than beat women. In 1998, Wendy Williams was dismissed from her position at Hey Healthy 97 following insinuations that the media mogul, Diddy, was homosexual. It's rumored that she possessed a photograph depicting Diddy in a private moment with another man. Jane Dill, Diddy's former bodyguard, elaborated on Williams' termination during a 2022 interview with The Art of Dialogue. In the interview, he discussed... Bruh. You started the conversation earlier about what did I mean about the power Puff had. With the radio stations in New York, motherfuckers didn't breathe hard if Puff didn't want them to. If, if Tupac had anything salacious, to say about Puff in that interview and Angie Martinez told Puff or let Puff, Puff heard it and he told them you can't play it they wasn't going to play it Puff got one of the hottest DJs off of Hot 97 because she wanted to put up a picture of him Getting his pants pulled. His assertion seemed credible, especially considering what happened to Wendy Williams when she spoke out against Diddy, insinuating that he was gay and claiming to have photographic evidence of him engaged in questionable activities with another man. It's often said that secrets eventually come to light. 
Recently, Fat Joe addressed rumors surrounding Jay-Z, discussing how Jay-Z's name has frequently been linked to rumors of involvement in rapper murders. While he defended Jay-Z, his remarks hinted at the prevalence of these rumors. Moreover, in a separate interview, Fat Joe joked about the speculation regarding Diddy and Jay-Z's relationship, suggesting that such rumors have persisted over time. However, he expressed surprise at newer rumors involving Meek Mill and Diddy, as he hadn't previously heard any speculation about Jay-Z and Diddy. This suggests a potentially orchestrated effort to tarnish reputations from within certain circles. Although rumors about Jay-Z being gay and having herps have surfaced, Diddy's alleged homosexuality seems more widely accepted. Yet Fat Joe's implication that Jay-Z and Diddy are in a homosexual relationship could be damaging to Jay-Z's reputation, given the close bond between the two. It raises questions about the extent of Diddy's influence, hinting that it may not solely be his own power at play. While it's known that Jay-Z and Diddy share a strong friendship, Fat Joe's statements suggest a deeper connection between them one that he suggests involves a clandestine romantic relationship. 